you've probably asked the question before. iPhone or Android? Apple Maps or Google Maps? Safari or Chrome? On the surface, Apple and Google represent the ultimate tech rivalry. But behind the scenes, executives have maintained a multi-billion dollar partnership that benefits them both massively. I would describe Apple and Google as the classic example of frenemies. Uh, on one hand, they're uh, fierce rivals. Uh, on the other hand, uh, they benefit greatly from figuring out ways to work together. Google pays Apple an estimated eight to $12 billion a year, or a third of Alphabet's annual profits, to make sure it's the default search engine on more than a billion Apple devices. That deal has helped Google dominate the search market. In recent years, it's accounted for 90 to 95% of search engine queries in the US. The deal between the two tech giants is so powerful that it's at the center of one of the biggest US government lawsuits against a public company since the 90s. So how did two of Silicon Valley's biggest rivals come to form one of tech's most valuable partnerships. To understand Apple and Google's frenemy relationship, you have to go back to the beginning. In the early days, uh, yeah, they were quite close. Uh, at the time, the CEO of Google was on Apple's board. It was part of the, the Silicon Valley uh, club, if you will. In 2005, the two companies laid the groundwork for what would become one of the industry's biggest deals. Google struck a deal with Apple to become the default search engine for Safari on Mac computers. As Apple evolved, so did the relationship. Um, in 2007, when the iPhone came out, uh, Google was then the default search uh, for the iPhone uh, Safari uh, browser, and it's really just uh, grown and grown from that point. So Steve, uh... You know, I, I've had the privilege of joining, joining the board, and there's a lot of relationships between the boards. And I thought, uh, you know, we, if we just sort of merge the companies, we could call them Apple Goo. Um, As it became clear that Google was going to be more than just a search engine and that it wanted to grow uh, and that Apple was going to be a rival, uh, that, that became an issue. In 2008, Google directly challenged Apple's business with the launch of its Android operating system. The next year, Google CEO Eric Schmidt resigned from Apple's board. Since then, both companies have expanded into each other's businesses, with Google launching Android phones and Apple launching services like the, the App Store. Store and Siri, which was originally powered by Microsoft's Bing, not Google. Search Wikipedia for Neil Armstrong. Searching for Neil Armstrong. It wasn't until 2017 that Apple switched from Bing to Google for its search results on Siri and Spotlight, the Mac search function. That renewed deal between Apple and Google came at a good time for both companies. Google was facing competition from Facebook's fast-growing mobile ad revenue, and its new deal with Apple put its search results and ads on more than a billion Apple devices. Now, up to half of Google searches come from Apple devices. When you open up your iPhone and go to Safari and write something that you want to search for, boom, you're going to Google. And that's a lot of value. For Apple, the deal has benefited its business twofold. First, it got more consistent search results across Safari, Siri, and Spotlight. But perhaps more importantly, the money it gets from Google's ad revenue makes up 15 to 20 percent of Apple's annual profits. That's helped fund Apple's ambitions to grow its services unit, which has driven growth for the company over the past few years. Apple is like a store. It's selling its shelf space, the primo shelf space. And so when you go into a store and you see those candy bars right there at the register, uh, that's the place to be if you're selling candy bars. And so for Google, they're in that default spot. Now, all of that money and search traffic could be at risk because of this lawsuit. In October, the U.S. Department of Justice sued Google over antitrust concerns. The government is alleging that Google is a monopoly gatekeeper for the internet. And it says that harms customers, advertisers, and competing tech companies. One way the Justice Department says Google maintains its dominance is through exclusive business deals, 
like through its partnership with Apple. According to the lawsuit, some people at Google called the prospect of losing its default status on Apple devices code red. Google representatives said they weren't aware of the code red language used in the lawsuit. And neither Apple or Google have officially disclosed the exact value of the deal, or commented on the Justice Department's $8 to $12 billion projection. In a recent interview, the journal's personal tech columnist Joanna Stern asked Google's former CEO about the deal. There was ultimately a deal that I did not personally negotiate, but it was a lucrative deal for Apple. Uh, but important to say that with respect to Google and with respect to use of Google search on Apple phones, it is extremely easy to switch to another prov provider. Google has denied the Justice Department's allegations and said it plans to challenge the lawsuit. Its chief legal officer said the lawsuit wouldn't help consumers and that its relationship with Apple is customary. Apple hasn't officially commented on the lawsuit. So what happens if the Justice Department is successful in its case? This could drag out for many years. This is an interesting situation. In some ways, if the DOJ is successful, the, one of the companies that might be harmed the most here is Apple, given the fact that they perhaps have 15 or 20% of their profit coming from this relationship. Of course, there are other search engines out there, like Bing, DuckDuckGo, Baidu, and Yandex, but none of them even come close to Google's dominance. Some financial analysts say that if anyone can give Google a run for its money, it's Apple. And the antitrust lawsuit might just be the push Apple needs to divorce itself from Google. We don't know exactly where Apple is going um, with its future plans here. Um, some have speculated that potentially this would be a good reason for Apple to develop its own search engine. Uh, others have said potentially they might buy a, a search engine to beef up that capability. One of the things we know about Apple um, over the years is that it likes to own its core competencies so it can control those worlds. Um, and so, you know, that's always kind of hanging in the background. Apple hasn't responded to requests for comment on plans to create or purchase its own search engine. Still, a breakup of this multi-billion dollar partnership between Apple and Google could deal a financial blow to two of the world's biggest companies. And however this relationship plays out in the future has the potential to shape the way billions of people use the internet. As we see uh, Congress and regulators debate the power of tech, this lawsuit is just yet another example of, of kind of that public debate uh, about their role in our future and in our society.